Good evening, everyone. My name is Simon Hart. You are very welcome to this evening's practice. Due to current restrictions, I've had to take all my patients online. Fortunately, this is a problem easily overcome thanks to Zoom. Now, my next patient's waiting. I better add him and then we can begin. Well, Mr. Hart, how are you? Mr. Lawrence, isn't it? I'm well, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Tell me, Mr. Lawrence, how did you hear my service? Well, actually, my wife went to you a few years ago and at the time said that you really helped her. So I looked you up myself and here I am. I see. I'm glad to see you. Are you familiar with how I work? Did your partner explain it before? Yeah, she did. Well, then you can start whenever you feel ready. Okay, so it really started when the second lockdown hit. You know, at first I thought it wouldn't be as bad because you'd already gone through the first one. After only three days, I was already starting to feel like crap. You know, I haven't really spoken to any of my friends in a while. And we did try to do some sort of group call, but nothing really became of it. To be honest, group calls are a bit awkward. And at that point, I hadn't been to work for a couple of weeks. So I hadn't even seen any of my friends from work, you know, because we have got crack, even though it's just work. And uh, I don't know. Absolutely. I know what you mean. You probably haven't seen anyone other than your partner in a while, right? Yeah, and the days just keep getting darker and darker. You know, I didn't want to be stuck in the house and I didn't want to go for walks either. And my wife, she's working from home and she's always asked me to do things like cook and clean because she's busy and I get that. Like, I should be doing things she's asking me. It's not going to do anything else anyway. It wouldn't be fair to expect her to do that plus the homeschooling on top, you know, since the crash closed and some of the staff tested positive and... You know, my kids are great, like they're the best and I try to stay positive for them, but with everything that's going on, I'm just, just finding it hard. I understand. It is hard. Just because we aren't working, it doesn't mean we don't have jobs and other things that get on top of us. And there isn't anyone that hasn't been affected by this virus, trust me. Most of the people I see feel really similar to how you do, and that's totally fine. Do you have anything to like help me get through this? I'm feeling really overwhelmed and alone right now. And I don't know when any of this is going to end or anything. The situation is bad right now. We can acknowledge this, but we have to try and remind ourselves that there are people who can help and things we can do to help us stay grounded, especially when everything is so up in the air. I'm going to prescribe something I think might help. It's called Uphill. Uphill by Christina Rossetti. Does the road wind uphill all the way? Yes, to the very end. Will the day's journey take the whole long day? From morn to night, my friend. But is there for the night a resting place? A roof for when the slow dark hours begin? May not the darkness hide it from my face? You cannot miss that in. Shall I meet other wayfarers at night? Those who have gone before. Then must I knock or call when just in sight? They will not keep you standing at that door. Shall I find comfort, travel sore and weak? Of labour you shall find the sum. Will there be beds for me and all who seek? Yeah, beds for all who come. While I call myself a pharmacist, perhaps a better term is a matchmaker. Hello? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't have you down on my schedule. And you have your camera turned off? Uh, sorry, Mr. Hart. My name is Amir. So it's so okay with you. I'd rather not use my camera. Okay, Amir. That's absolutely fine. How can I help? Uh, Mr. Hart, I've, I've heard of the work that you do. And I was wondering if you could find something for my situation. I'll certainly try to. Could you please share the situation that you're in? I live and work in Dublin and I come from a strict Muslim family. My, my mother in particular is very religious and a big presence in the Muslim community here. But in the last while I've been trying to find myself, I, I think I, I could be gay. You can't be gay, I'm Muslim. If I told her, she'd, she'd probably kick me out. Amir? 
Yes. Thank you. I can't imagine that was easy. I get the impression you've been carrying this for some time, more than likely on your own. Am I right? Yes, uh, you're the first person I've told. I've known for quite a while now. Apart from the fact I'm living a lie to my family, I also feel like I've been lying to Allah. I'm not as strict as my mother. I, I eat pork sometimes, but still. The first thing I can say to you, Amir, is there's no rush to come out. Food and shelter are the most important things if you can't provide that for yourself. The rest can wait. What I have for you is from a man who lived in Iran from 1420 to 1489. He is possibly one of the greatest writers in Persian history, a deeply religious man. And he wrote this. It happens all the time in heaven by Hafiz. It happens all the time in heaven. And someday it will begin to happen again on earth. That men and women who are married and men and men who are lovers and women and women who give each other light often get down on their knees and while so tenderly holding their lover's hand with tears in their eyes will sincerely speak saying my dear how can i be more loving to you how can i be more kind a matchmaker now my next patient sent me an email today asking if i could see her apparently she has something she needs help getting grips with let's find out what i might have to help shall we Hello, Sarah. Hi, Mr. Hart. How are you? Thank you for seeing me on such short notice. It's quite all right, Sarah. In your email, you said you had something you needed help. Getting grips with, I think you phrased it. Please, tell me what I can do to help or share the situation if you wouldn't mind. Well, to be honest with you, Mr. Hart, it does sound almost trivial. About three weeks ago, my dog was knocked down by a car and we had to put him down. He was old and just ran it onto the road. The door was open and he shot out. That's terrible. I'm so sorry. And it's not trivial at all. Dogs aren't called man's best friend for nothing, you know. I have one myself, his name's Leo. What was your dog's name? Marshall, named after one of the Paw Patrol pups. My younger brother loves watching them. I was wondering, really, if you had something I could give to my brother. He's still very upset. Dogs really do help to take us out of our own heads sometimes. I think I might have something for your brother. Maybe you'll get something out of it too. Think of it as a testament to Marshall's life work. Golden Retrievals by Mark Dotty. Fetch? Balls and sticks capture my attention seconds at a time. Catch? I don't think so. Bunny, tumbling leaf, a squirrel who's, oh joy, actually scared. <laughs> Sniff the wind, then I'm off again. Muck, pond, ditch, residue of any thrillingly dead thing. And you? Either you're sunk in the past, half-hour walk, thinking of what you can never bring back, or else you're off in some fog concerning... Tomorrow? Is that what you call it? My work, to unsnare time's warp, and woof, retrieving my haze-headed friend you. This shining bark, a Zen master's bronzy gong, calls you here entirely now. bow wow. Bow -wow. Bow -wow. Now my last patient of the evening. Hello, Mr. Hart, poetry pharmacist. That's me. Hello to you too. Ah, uh, hello. I'm Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. How are you? Well, I'm okay, but I am struggling with something that I was hoping to talk to you about. That's why I'm here. How can I help? Okay, um, well, I'm a very shy person and not many people notice me, which is fine, really, because I don't like when people do notice me. Oh, why is that? I just prefer not to have everyone stare at me, really. It makes me feel self-conscious. Do you feel like people are judging you or are talking about you? No, they never say anything to me, not with words anyway, but I can tell. Like when I was in school, people would look at me and I just know they would say stuff about me. Why would they say something about you? It's because I'm not as good looking as other girls. 
other girls are always prettier than me, not as fat as me. And when I say clothes or have bigger boobs, I don't know. I don't have any of those things. I am not good at makeup or doing my hair. I'm not even funny. It's hard, especially for women, to keep up with these beauty standards, to be pretty, be funny, and this and that. And actually, it's just completely unrealistic. You're right, but you aren't the only one. Everyone has insecurities or things they wish were different about themselves. But you know something? I can tell that you're brave simply for speaking about this. Not many people can do that. And you're young. No doubt you have goals and things you want to achieve in life. So why give a hoot about what other people have to say? Tell me something you're really good at or something you enjoy doing. Well, I like to dance in my room. Amazing. What do you dance to? <laughs> Probably Lady Gaga or Katy Perry. I bet you forget about everything when you dance. Yeah, kind of. Rebecca, thank you for telling me how you feel. I'm going to prescribe something called phenomenal woman. I think it might help when you start to feel shy or feel like people are looking at you. Phenomenal woman by Maya Angelou. Pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. I walk into a room just as cool as you please, and to a man, the fellows stand or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honeybees. I say it's the fire in my eyes and the flash of my teeth, the swing in my waist and the joy in my feet. I'm a woman phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the right of my breast, the grace of my style. I'm a woman phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Now, you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need for my care. Because I'm a woman phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me.